Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where Dr. Janine Krauss, that's me, gives you, a health junkie, a weekly dose of tools to help you increase your energy and resilience to life stressors. The Health Fix Podcast is sponsored by Blue Blocks. That's B-L-U-B-L-O-X. Those guys are blue light blocking glasses. And let me tell you, I have been using their computer glasses for over a month now, and I have not had any headaches. I'm not feeling fatigued at the end of the day, and I am feeling great. That strain from me being on the computer and having these awful fluorescent lights above my head has gone away. So I challenge you to check out Blue Blocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X today and see what they can do for you. Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krauss. And on today's episode, I'm gonna be talking about how sunlight exposure impacts your gut health. So, the gut being one of my most favorite things to talk about and being out in the sun, one of my most favorite hobbies. Hey, what could make a better podcast? So let's dive in. What does sun actually do for you? A lot of us know that there's the vitamin D connection, of course, but really what does vitamin D do? What is vitamin D? What happens when we get more vitamin D in our body? Well, we end up helping our hormones work better. We end up helping absorb more calcium to make stronger bones, but we also help to make more serotonin, which is our happy neurochemical. And serotonin is a precursor for making something called melatonin, which is a neurochemical that helps us to sleep. And in particular, melatonin is an antioxidant that has all kinds of benefits for the body. So today I'm going to be talking about all of those different things and how you really want to be thinking about how much sunlight exposure you get during the day. Because sadly, most Americans do not get out in the sun enough. It's kind of crazy. And when I look at the overall impact of my patients in terms of sunlight exposure, I will find that the less someone gets out in the sun, the more they're going to have trouble sleeping. The more that there's going to be illness, fatigue, depression, all kinds of things. So we got to talk about this, people. We got to talk about getting outside more. There are so many benefits and they've been studied. So let me talk about the first and foremost one that I really like. There is a study that was done on children and their exposure to the outdoors. So they did these outdoor activities. And what happened is that it changed their gut microbiome. So they tested the kiddo's stool before and then after this exposure. And what happened is they gained more of a microbe called Roseburia. Now, this one's tested in the Viome and GI mapping and and you name it in terms of all of the popular gut microbiome tests. So that's cool. And I found that it can be low in certain people, but we don't have a pill. So we don't have a probiotic that boosts our Roseburia microbiome. We don't have it. I just said microbiome, microbe. We don't have that bacteria in a, in a pill form. So how do we get more of it? Go outside. Huge, right? So that's cool. We have proof that going outside, getting sunlight, but also just being outside in the outdoors helps us to change our microbiome. Now, this was just a kid's study. There's more studies on adults as well, but I like the kids one because it talked about outdoor activities in particular, just outside having fun. So that's one aspect. Let's talk more about the sun as a whole and how this all kind of plays. Have more serotonin in our gut than we do in our brain. So what does this mean? Our gut is mission control. Our gut is crucial for our resilience, right? Because the happier we are, the better we feel, the better we'll take care of ourselves. But if we're not happy, we're not feeling good, of course we're not gonna take care of ourselves. Resilience is huge. Resilience equals immunity. 
The stronger your immune system is, the better you are at fighting things off, the harder you are to kill by all the environmental toxins, by all the environmental things that are being impacted upon you that you can't even control. Resilience, the gut, sunlight, simple stuff, but hugely impactful. The more sunlight you're exposed to, the better you can sleep. I've already kind of talked about that. But why? What are the other things involved here? So let's talk about these details. In particular, sunlight cues the body to make vitamin D. We know about this. And what does vitamin D do? It it helps us to make serotonin. It also helps us to increase calcium absorption so our bones are stronger. So we're not going to break our bones. We're going to be able to get out in the world and do the things we have to do to survive. Sunlight cues our retina to make serotonin and dopamine. That's kind of cool. And the ones that control dopamine release are ones that control like how big our pupil gets, so how much light gets let in. We are designed to suck in sunlight and use it for our good. So why are we sitting inside on computers all day? Why are we being slaves to our jobs At the risk of our health, why are we not getting outside more? I challenge you to think about that. Your body is designed to use this as a benefit for you. Vitamin D is helpful for, yes, the the strong bones, but it's also helpful for regulating your neuroendocrine hormones. So this is your estrogens, your testosterones your progesterone, crucial things here that a lot of us decline on as we get older and stress depletes as well. So those photosensitive cells in our retina actually send messages up to our hypothalamus. So this is like your mission control up there. And it's sending messages down rhythmically To tell your body it's daytime, it's nighttime, it's time to go to bed, it's time to stay awake. We're still cave people. We still respond to these signals. We're just like plants, really. If you simplify it, we are much like plants. We need sunlight. We need consistency. And I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit. And particularly food. Plants rely on water. We rely on water, and half the time we're running around dehydrated. These are big things that we overlook. We're looking for that simple thing, like that pill to take that's going to make it all go away. Sometimes we have to go back to basics. And if you've listened to any of my other podcasts, you hear me saying over and over again, back to basics, back to basics. Now, because serotonin is a precursor for melatonin, let's think about this here. Sunlight helps us to produce serotonin to keep us happy and moving all day long and and satisfied with life, right? Because we got the dopamine hits from sunlight. And that's why you feel so good when you're out in sunlight. But then it gets recycled and made into melatonin to help us to sleep. Now, recycled might be a a little bit of a a stretch, but we, we turn, we convert the serotonin into melatonin and then we sleep so awesome we have very smart intelligent bodies that we do not give our bodies enough credit for we can heal ourselves we have the ability to regulate we just have to give the body the right signals and get outside and do the things it needs so check this out if you get exposed to early morning light from two minutes to 10 minutes you're already helping your body to produce more serotonin, which is going to get converted to melatonin that night. So I don't know about you, but I have made it a point now since knowing this, that I get out every morning and take my little critters for a walk. And if it's raining, I will sit on my back porch and get that exposure to sunlight because even though it's raining, there's still sun up there. If you haven't been on a plane recently, which most of us probably haven't because of all the pandemic stuff, but You know that when you get above that cloud level, what do you got? Sun. It's always there. We forget. And so a lot of people will have that mindset where like, oh, it's raining. I'm not going to go outside. I'm not going to get sun exposure. Yes, you are. Your eyes do have that light exposure. So 
two to 10 minutes early morning light. Make it a priority. Put it as part of a little bit of meditation in the morning for yourself. This is huge because this is going to help you to make serotonin that's going to get converted later to make melatonin to help you sleep. Huge deal here. Now, here's another interesting thing that I found in some of my research when I was prepping for this podcast. I found that as we get older, there's a connection, of course, to to not sleeping as much, right? Because we, we cat nap as we get older during during the day. And, and you've seen with any of your older relatives, or maybe you might be starting to experience this yourself. But we're finding that as you get older, you have trouble sleeping throughout the night. There's some hormonal stuff there, maybe a lack of progesterone, but there's also a key component here, lack of adequate sunlight coming in through the eyes. What is that connection to that I found in the research? Cataracts and glaucoma. I didn't really think about it before. I just thought like, oh, part of aging means we struggle to sleep at night. Wait, no, it's not because of necessarily full aging. It might be because we're not getting outside as much because we're older and not wanting to move around as much. Maybe. But it also might be that cataracts or glaucoma are preventing the retina from getting those signals and sending messages to make serotonin, dopamine, and eventually from the serotonin to melatonin conversion. So it's something to think about. I thought it was kind of a cool connection that I found. Something to think about. Now, those ultraviolet rays of the sun also release beta endorphin. And beta endorphins increase our alertness, and it also works on fighting depression. So it lifts your mood. This also is connected. These beta endorphins are connected to decreasing pain and increasing wound healing time. So why wouldn't we want a little sunlight on our skin? Help it to improve wounds. Like, heck yeah. So we can go down some pretty good geeky pathways as to what it is that stimulates the beta endorphins and things of that nature. But for all intents and purposes, I might be one of the only huge geeky people that wants to go down that. So I'm not going to, but I'm going to leave you some resources on my website at drjkrausnd.com if you want to dive further into some of the research that I poured over to create this podcast. Now, another interesting component about sunlight is it helps with our cognition and our learning and our memory over time. So another big reason that we need to keep going outside, you know, we need to not forget that we're all still kids on the inside and we need that five-year-old, like channel your inner five-year-old and get out and play because we forget how to play as we get older. And then we spend more time indoors and then we're not getting that sunlight. You can see it. Look at your older relatives. Think about your parents. Think about yourself even right now. Most of us are slaves to our computer and we like to keep it indoors. I love to pull mine outdoors. If you looked at my keys right now, a lot of them have the things melted off them because I have a little bit of an addiction to the sun. And I now am starting to embrace it. Maybe I'm using this podcast to justify it a little bit. But there are some reasons. So how do we get that focus and concentration and memory on point with the sunlight? Well, we can increase glutamate in the brain with sunlight using something called urocanic acid. I had to type that one out and make sure I said it right. Urocanic acid. So we get the UV exposure in through our eyes. That urocanic acid basically increases, and then it crosses the blood-brain barrier, and we make glutamate, which helps us with being focused. Now, some of you that might be familiar with the term glutamate might be thinking, well, monosodium glutamate gives me migraines. Why do I want migraines and things of that nature? Okay, fair enough. There are some things within the glutamate pathway. If glutamate builds up too high in the brain, yes, it can agitate you, cause, cause migraines. This is why, you know, limiting sun exposure can be useful. I do think so. Wearing sunglasses can be useful. You're still going to get some sun rays through. But having more sunlight has a benefit at the same time. So we have to balance it out, right? I'm not saying go out in the middle of the day between 12 and three o'clock and bake your cookies. I'm talking like early morning sunlight, getting out at least two to three times throughout the day. And then in the evening, perhaps getting that walk in when the sun's starting to go down. Now we've got a little bit more of circadian rhythm sinking in for that brain of ours. So something to think about. Of course, my podcast is all about helping you to just kind of provoke that brain a little. 
Because not only have we found out that we're working just the brain and the hormones with sunlight, we're sinking our tissues, our skin, our organs to circadian rhythms when we wake up, when we go to bed, and what they do metabolically, activity-wise. So evening time, metabolism, that stuff, storage. Now I said evening time. In the evening time, we're repairing and storing in the in, in overnight. And in the daytimes, we're metabolizing. That's what's happening. We want to keep those signals straight. How do we keep those signals straight? We have to expose ourselves to a little bit more sunlight. The other big thing is that our body relies off of predictability. We want to sink our body to waking up with the light and going to bed with the dark. But we also want our gut to be sinking. So you've trained your body for whatever circadian rhythm you have right now. If you suck at sleep, you've trained your body to be sucky at sleep. I know it's a hard reality to to swallow, but that's true. But the good news is, is you can untrain it, right? Anything that you've trained yourself to do, you can retrain yourself to do something else. And that's the beauty of it. You need sun to sleep at night. Bottom line, tons of research on that. You also need sleep and sun to help with regulating your caloric intake, using glucose effectively, so balancing your blood sugar in the body, but also how much leptin you release. So leptin is related to your metabolism and your hunger and your fullness signals. I'm not going to go down that. That's a whole other podcast. But what I'm trying to get at here is that your gut is directly affected by sunlight exposure and sleep, how much sleep you have. So with the gut, like I mentioned earlier in this podcast, we have more serotonin in our gut than we do in our brain. So if we're not making sufficient levels of serotonin because we're not getting outside enough, not enough sunlight exposure, Do you think that would mess with your gut? Yes, it would mess with your gut signaling. And what does serotonin do in the gut? It's in charge of movement of the gut. So sometimes all of a sudden folks will end up with a bunch of diarrhea or they'll end up with more constipation. And they're like, nothing else has really changed. I didn't change my diet. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. And then I ask, okay, are you more stressed at work? Are you working more? Are you inside more? And then it's like, oh yeah, I, you know, I haven't been outside. I haven't seen the sun, you know, come up in years. So this is when we have to think about things. Okay, if we're not getting outside and then we're having trouble sleeping, this directly affects our digestive system. There is a ton of research on this. And I'm going to dive into how that particularly happens. I'm going to kind of map it out behind me on the whiteboard for you. All right, so we hear a lot of research on what sleep deprivation does, but we don't really think about how that sun kind of plays into that mix because we're not thinking about that serotonin to melatonin conversion. So there's been a ton of research done on what melatonin does for the body. And there's a lot of debate of whether you should take melatonin, whether you shouldn't, blah, 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 blah. Here's the thing. After I started learning all these benefits of melatonin, I thought to myself, I got to try this out because I'm convinced that melatonin has been helping me in terms of not only with my sleep, but with my gut and maybe more with my gut than my sleep, because now I've added the component of sunlight to help me out here. There are research studies that have shown direct connection to melatonin and improving leaky gut. Also improving IBS or IBD. Acid reflux is another component here. So if you've tried a bunch of different medications for your gut, especially acid reflux, some of the proton pump inhibitors, things of that nature, these have been linked in recent studies to cancer, like ranitidine and things of that nature, but also in terms of causing trouble with absorption of nutrients. And cancer is kind of scary, but nutrient depletions also scary. Why? Because if we have nutrient depletions, now we're messing with our immunity, our cellular function, our enzymes, and that can increase weight. So if you have acid reflux, you want to be thinking about like, okay, sun exposure, getting enough melatonin and helping your gut 
to repair because acid reflux has the ability to erode your esophagus and cause some serious troubles. But not only that, more acidic of a stomach can cause ulcers. Lack of melatonin has been linked to slower healing of gastric ulcers. So taking melatonin has been found to help improve the healing time of gastric ulcers. So if you've been taking, say, glutamine and things of that nature and not seeing results with either your acid reflux or your ulcers, we might be thinking about you need some sun exposure and maybe a little melatonin. The most recent research I found was up to three milligrams of melatonin at night can help the body with repairing leaky gut, with acid reflux, with some irritable bowel syndrome stuff. Now, nothing's been tied specific to weight loss, but we know that the more sleep you get, the more that you are going to be successful with the weight loss program. You're going to be more successful with disordered eating as well over time. Now, if we look at the root of disordered eating, where's that coming from? It's usually a response to a stressor an emotional eating response to that stressor. What do we need to improve our emotions? Serotonin. What's huge in the gut? Where do we have more serotonin in the gut than in the brain? Hmm, is there a connection here? Quite possibly. So this is something that I dove a little bit deeper into because I wanted to know what happens when we don't have enough sunlight, when we don't have enough sleep. What really happens in the gut? Well, a couple different things. In particular, the gut is more prone to inflammation. So we have this cascade of white blood cell inflammation markers heading over to the gut to inflame it on a chronic basis. Your gut is your root of your immune system. If you're not protecting it by not sleeping and not getting out, You're missing the boat here. You could be eating as clean as possible. You could be doing your intermittent fasting. You could be detoxing as much as you want, but if you don't have the basic stuff down, you could be negating everything. And I look at this as my search for as to why my mom ended up with cancer. I have a lot of theories. She had some stress in her life, but she ate very clean, especially for the 80s and 90s. Granted, she liked to use the microwave. That's a whole nother story, but we ate quite clean when I was younger. So why did she get sick? She wasn't that great of a sleeper. She started to work more hours and not get out as much. She used to play softball when I was a little kid, didn't play it as I got older. So I'm starting to see a pattern here that maybe part of what went down with my mom and why she ended up with cancer is this whole sleep and sun connection. Hmm. So let's talk a little bit about the immune system of the gut. It's under circadian rhythm regulation, so sleep and wake cycles. And the inflammatory meteors like TNF-alpha have direct connection with what's known as these clock genes or internal clock genes genes. They actually are C-L-O-C-K genes, but there's other ones too. But in particular, these genes sync to daytime, nighttime. That's why during the daytime, we metabolize things and nighttime, we store things and repair things. Our body knows that, but it bases it off of food cues. One of my mom's biggest things that I learned from her is disordered eating. She got stressed out, she'd eat. Guess who did the same thing? me. So what was happening is she was eating later in the evening, which tends to be what a lot of us do. If you're waking up in the middle of the night, like you go to bed and you wake up in the middle of the night and you have to eat, this is a huge issue. This is a huge sleep-wake issue. You are messing with your gut immunity in this case. And you want to get that worked on. You want to fix that. Because that is what leads to weight gain. It leads to all kinds of metabolic disorders. But also we're looking at your immunity of your gut. This whole thing with the pandemic, we've talked about immunity, immunity, immunity. A lot of us are walking around sleep deprived, sun deprived, not eating proper nutrition, not eating as clean as we possibly can. 
of course we're going to have compromised immune systems. Regardless of how you feel about vaccines and things of that nature, I want folks to think about, wouldn't you like to have the best immune system you possibly could? The strongest immune system? If you want that, you got to figure this out. Sleep and wake cycles. So getting back to why do we have inflammation on the gut when we don't sleep or when we don't get enough sunlight, it's because the body wants to keep inflammatory responses going on, on that gut lining. And leaky gut is what really promotes it. So the lack of sleep, the lack of sun, not getting enough melatonin to keep your gut lining strong, guess what's going to happen? You're going to end up with leaky gut. It's a stress response. The more stressed you are, the more leaky that gut becomes. Why? Because the more stressed you are, the more you're probably working overtime and not getting outside and the more you're not sleeping. So what happens when that happens? Well, that leaky gut is going to stimulate white blood cells and natural killer cells and all of these things called pro-inflammatory cytokines, which are messengers that create issues. And as your sleep disturbances get worse, so you're not sleeping as much, the more this happens and happens and happens over and over and over again to the point that it starts to mess with your neuroendocrine system. So your ability to make your hormones estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, things of that nature. So really, we are looking at simple stuff going back, affecting your gut, and then trashing your ability to make hormones. Every single weight loss program should have this included. It shocks me that we're, we have programs this day and age that we're pounding people with all of these fake protein powders and yeah, you get weight loss, but as soon as you go back to your regular schedule, what happens? Weight goes back up. We gotta be thinking about sleep and sun as it relates to the gut. And in particular, an exaggerated immune response that happens when we're not sleeping, getting enough sun. This IBS, so irritable bowel syndrome or irritable bowel disorder, this kind of stuff is huge. Same thing with when they turn into things like colitis, Crohn's. I can never spell that one right. And colitis, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's. These are autoimmune manifestations of leaky gut. Leaky gut went overboard. Why? Because sleep and sun, not making enough melatonin, so not making enough serotonin to make the melatonin to keep the gut healthy. So the inflammatory cytokines just kept coming and coming and coming. Then you add life stressors, compound that, and it's difficult to deal with all of this. So your gut lining just keeps staying degraded. You're not digesting food properly. You're not absorbing nutrients properly. Your hormones start to be dysregulated and you start to gain weight. You also might have more food sensitivities because the more that you have leaky gut, the more that you are susceptible to foods getting across your bloodstream and into your joints, into your bloodstream and causing immune system issues. These are things that are quite complicated when we get to all of the different things that are happening on the gut lining but they shouldn't be. We should be looking back at the basics. So think about this. And in my practice, I've talked millions of times over and over and in the podcast as well, that I have folks coming in and they're like, I have SIBO, so small intestine bowel overgrowth. I have chronic constipation. I have yeast infections in my gut that just keep coming back. And I've taken all these pharmaceuticals and I've taken all these herbs and nothing seems to be working. And then I say, how well do you sleep? Do you get outside? It's like deer in the headlights. What? No, I need to kill my thing. Bugs. Like, come on, doc. You got, you got the answer. I need this kill protocol. No. Get back to the simple stuff. We need to start thinking about the simple things that got us out of balance in the first place. Because if you have leaky gut or if you have an inflammatory reaction happening on your gut lining, how can the beneficial bugs live? They can't. It's not even possible. If I do a GI mapping test on you 
and you don't sleep and you don't get enough sun, I am like dollars of donuts on this one. I'm going to find that your bacteria, so your beneficial bacteria, your probiotics that you've been taking probably for the last decade are not able to live. What's living? Dandelions. Dandelions are going to be all over the place. What are dandelions? Things like yeast, strap, strap, strep, staph, clostridia. Those are dandelions in your gut. Yes, you naturally have them there, but they're going to be dandelions because you've got leaky gut. You've got gut lining inflammation because you didn't get enough serotonin production to convert to melatonin. Now, are there other things that are involved in the conversions? Absolutely. There's minerals, there's vitamins, there's enzymes. How do we get those? Proper digestion. We got to break them down, right? We got to break the foods down to be able to get these vitamins and minerals. So am I anti-vitamins and minerals? No, because I think we do need some of this stuff. Do I think that you can supplement your way out of good, solid behaviors for your health? Absolutely not. Do I think that taking vitamin D versus getting vitamin D from the sun has an impact? I think you need both because some people do not effectively convert vitamin D from the sun. There are genetic mutations. The VDRTAQ is one in particular that will kind of inhibit your ability to convert vitamin D from the sun, but it doesn't help. It doesn't prevent your retina from converting the sunlight to serotonin and further to melatonin. So there are reasons for those of you out there who are like, oh, I, sun's not going to help me. No, there are reasons to get out there. Many. Many reasons. Mentally. Physically. Now, the other thing that you might be thinking right now is, well, Doc, you know, what about the sun? Like, it's damaging to our skin. We're going to get, you know, cancers and things like melanomas and basal cell carcinomas and you name it. Well, yes, there, there is that risk. But how does our immunity get out of whack in the first place? All of the basics went off the rails. The sleep, the sun. Am I saying that you shouldn't use sunblock? Am I saying that you shouldn't use these things or sunscreen? No, I do think we should use it. I think that we just need some natural sunlight, 15 minutes in the sun each day without the sunblock. Just getting out there. Get out there in the early morning. When the sun rays aren't as intense, between 12 and 3 p.m., that's the most intense part of the day, and that's the most damaging part of the day for your, for your skin. Get out there 6 a.m. when the sun's just coming up. You are not going to get a sunburn at that time. Okay, a better dis disclaimer. Okay, less likelihood of getting a sunburn at 6 a.m. than it is at noon to 3 p.m. I know someone can argue the daylights out of that on me. So disclaimer, but likelihood is less thinking of it that way. Yes, I do wear sunscreen. I love Suntegrity, by the way, favorite sunscreen that, that I use out there. Lovely stuff, but, and they're not paying me to say that. I just love the company, but you do need to think about it first. Fine lines, wrinkles. Yes, absolutely. But if you're dialing in your sleep and your sun, you're going to have enough estradiol. You're going to make estradiol naturally so you can kind of prevent those guys. We have to think of it full circle. We are not in, like our skin is not one particle or part of us. Everything's connected together. So thinking of everything in your health as a full circle impact on you is huge. That is the concept that even as a naturopathic doctor, I sometimes forget I compartmentalize things. And this is not necessarily beneficial to anyone. We need to be thinking about our whole circle of life here, how everything interconnects, true holistic medicine here. But first and foremost, we got to be thinking about when we tackle the concept of, of skin cancer and, and sun being damaging, we have to not be afraid of the sun. The sun is there for a benefit. Just look at your plants. They will turn themselves towards the sun in the window. Do you think that that is like the most magical thing ever? I do. Why are we not doing this? Why have we been brainwashed to think that the sun is so damaging? I mean, yes, there's melanomas. Yes, there are these things. I absolutely agree. But I don't think we should be keeping ourselves completely out of the sun. I think there is some benefit 
And I think the early morning and the late evening and a couple of exposures during the day, so during your breaks, getting outside. Wear your sunscreen on your face and wherever else you need to, depending on what exposure you're going to have that day. Absolutely. I'm full support of that. But don't be afraid of the sun. It has a huge capacity to help you. And in particular, the biggest eye-opener for me with my latest research here is really all of the impacts that sunlight has the potential to help in your gut. And it may be one of the missing links that we haven't been thinking about or, or really talking about as much in terms of how we can help you to get your gut function moving and working optimally. Because serotonin signaling in the gut has a lot to do with whether you're absorbing food or pushing it through very fast, as in the case of diarrhea, or if you're holding foods in the case of constipation. This is a big deal. So I hope that this podcast has just given you a little bit of a thought in terms of how you might want to go back to basics when you're breaking it down to sleep, sun, and the immune system huge key components here that if you're overlooking them, maybe it's time to revisit these things. All right, folks, you have survived another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Kraus. You guys have a great day, whatever you're doing. This podcast was sponsored by Blue Blocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X blue light blocking glasses. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can head over to blublox.com or check out my podcast notes at drjkrausnd.com where you can find a link to get all kinds of special deals from the Blue Blocks company. Hey, Health Junkies, I hope you enjoyed my podcast. If you want to continue the conversation based on what topic I'm talking about at any given time on the Health Fix podcast, head over to my Facebook group, Find Your Health Fix. It's where we are talking about what's going on in health, what I'm talking about in the podcast, and I love to answer questions there. So come hang out and join the conversation. And by the way, right now I have a free Manage Your Stress Naturally course that you can grab on my website at drjkrausnd.com because so many people are stressed out right now and really it has to do with the basics, your routines and simple habits that are messing you up. So head on over to drjkrausnd.com and go check out my free course on managing stress naturally. All right, folks, have a great day, whatever you're doing. Subscribe, rate, and share info. 